again with another video. I hope you guys are all being safe. I hope you guys are practicing social distancing at its finest. I hope that we are um, washing our hands and most importantly, taking all safety precautions for not only yourself, but your family. Sorry, sorry, sorry that I did not upload a video yesterday. I was super duper busy. Um, however, tonight we are going to try to make two videos to make up for Monday as well as today, Tuesday. So just bear with me and we should get through these fairly quickly. Today we are going to be learning a few concepts um, such as continuing with dance, dance methods, and dance styles, as well as coming back, pulling it together with nutrition. Not so sure the order, but at some point tonight, it's gonna happen. Sorry that I chose this song, but I am so in love with the song right now. I've been listening to it almost every day. Decided to give it a share with you guys. Um, but, Let's get started. All right, now let's dive in. As you can hear, I changed the music to match this description. I don't think that Tame Impala would suit well ballet. So I had put on some Disney classical music. You're welcome. All right. So another uh, slide for you guys. So again, bear with me. I'm personally excited about this one um, only because ballet is what really started me in my dance career not necessarily what draw, draw, had drawn me to it, but I believe every dancer that goes on learns and learns about dance starts in ballet, especially once you hit high school. All right, so let's dive in. All about ballet dance. Ballet originated in the Italian Renaissance court and was brought to France by Catherine de Medici in the 16th century. In the 17th century, ballet popularity in France increased and started to be performed by professional dancers with great acrobatic skills along with acrobatic skills one should always keep in mind that b before performing any kind of stress on the body specific spreading of the ligaments anything of that sort always always be sure to stretch that should be my number one rule I should I should make a logo because I'm always hearing myself say that. But besides that, back to the point, always be sure to stretch. Stretching is a must for all dancers before they do any kind of choreography. So this is something you should always keep in mind. As you can see in this picture here, she's throwing her right leg back. That's not something she just decided to do. It's something that she'd have to, um, stretch and learn to be flexible to improve on this move and as you can see she's doing it beautifully let's move on academy the dance was the first ballet school established in 1661 by king louis can you imagine that look how beautiful this place is This is a great place to see a great piece of history, especially for those who live by dance. Now, 
Now, with styles, there are so many different styles when it comes to ballet. A few uh, right off the bat that um, come to mind are classical ballet, one um, specifically known for its choreography in Swan Lake, a really popular ballet dance, The Sleeping Beauty, and The Nutcracker. If you haven't seen any of those, I highly recommend that you go check those out. Second, Romantic Ballet. One that comes to mind is Giselle. D Giselle is an interesting story and um, often considered to be the most widely celebrated romantic ballet. Third, we look at neoclassical ballet. Neoclassical ballet is usually abstract, um, not really with a clear plot, uh, but has costumes and a great scenery. The music choice can be diverse, uh, but it often includes um, Tim Scholl, uh, let's see, George Balanchine, a few um, neoclassical popular series is the uh, Blan I'm sorry, Blanchine episodes that were performed in 1959. Alright, the fourth style, contemporary ballet. This is personally my favorite and one that I've grown to love. Um, in my years of dance. Uh, it's often performed barefoot. This includes mime and acting and is usually set to music. Uh, it can, you know, it can be difficult to differentiate this form from neoclassical or modern ballet, but this includes uh, a form of contemporary, uh, such as like leaps, uh, different stretches that one wouldn't typically do back then. Let's see. Uh, a good uh, piece of work would be hiplet, um, but it also requires dancers to be uh, precise in the Western dance styles. So those are just a few that come to mind, but um, anyways, let's let's move on. As I mentioned before, we look at Romantic Ballet. Romantic Ballet is defined by an era during the early to mid 19th century in which ballets featured themes that emphasized intense emotion as a source of aesthetic experience. Classical ballet. Classical ballet is based on traditional ballet technique and vocabulary. Now, um, here shortly, we are going to go over some vocabulary that I would like to share with you. But before I can really execute any vocabulary with you, I believe it's important to match a picture with that description. So after the slide, we will be looking at... Uh, vocabulary, vocabulary with its, you know, dance style or picture that you guys can get a better understanding of. Also, we will be viewing videos similar to the hip hop videos. Uh, we're gonna kind of go in that um, phases, if you will. So yeah, definitely look out for videos and a vocabulary lesson after this slide. All right, neoclassical ballet. Neoclassical ballet is a style that utilizes classical ballet technique and vocabulary, but deviates from classical ballet in its use of the abstract. So, as I mentioned before, there's no uh, clear form to this. It's almost all over the place, but it's what one person makes it. Contemporary. 
contemporary ballet. Contemporary ballet is a form of dance that opens up the doors to for any style to influence a work made utilizing ballet technique. Ballet technique represents the foundation principles for body movement for every dancer. Because it gives you strength. Oh my god. Look how strength is spelled here. I did not do that. Anyways, uh, precise body form. It gives you precise body movement. Flexibility. Guys, remember key word flexibility. No one can be as flexible as they are without stretching. It also gives you discipline and most importantly for performance it gives you elegance in everything you do ballet is the inspiring passion that drives our way to success this is a scene from swan lake The greatest ballerinas for all this time. We're gonna have a look at the top five ballerinas of all time. However, this can definitely be, um, I mean, one's opinion and debated, but again, everyone has their own uh, view on who's the best. So, uh, bear with me. Anna Pavlova, 1881 to 1931. One of the most celebrated and influential ballerinas ever, the Russian made up for her apparent limited technique with a unique charm. She's renowned for her creation of the role, The Dying Swan, choreographed for her by Michael Fokin. Galina Yulanova, 1910 to 1998. One of the greatest ballerinas of the 20th century, credited both as a wonderful actress and dancer. Alicia Markova, 1910 to 2004. Hailed as the ultimate interpreter of Giselle, Alicia Markova was a catalytic modernizing force for both British and American dance. Margaret Fontaine, 1990 to 1991, a dancer of incomparable musicality, line and grace. Fontaine helped make ballet more accessible and popular in Britain than it ever had been. So she brought a lot of uh, opportunity as far as this form of dance to her um, country, if you will. Nadia Norina, 1927 to 2008. A brilliant leading ballerina with the Royal Ballet, whose bravura brought her admiration in Russia. She gained immortality by having Frederick Ashton's masterpiece, La Filet Mal Garde, created on her. Now, again, excuse my French, but you know, you have to keep in mind that a lot of uh, our ballet words that we're about to dive into. Um, do stem from French words, some Italian as well. Cute little quote here. Belly is when your soul is moving, guided by the voice of your love. I mean, you guys have heard this before. I even mentioned it in my previous video. Dance is definitely another form of communication 
it tells the audience what you're feeling it tells the audience all of your emotions without you even speaking a word so dance is very very powerful within itself i highly recommend this as any kind of tool when relieving stress or just the need to you know have fun even a workout man you can't imagine the amount of carbs that are burned from dance alone as mentioned earlier we are now gonna dive into some vocabulary with um, some pictures some pictures may not match the descriptions great but it does give you an idea as to what I am referring to all right let's get started the first word we are looking at is, can you say it? And no, it's not ply. It is plie. Plie means to bend. It's a bend of the knees in this region. Demi. Demi is a half plie, hence half of a moon. So large. What can we think of as large? What comes to mind? No, nothing. Alright, it's a grand, grande, otherwise known. This is uh, a term used when we say grand plie. So a grand plie is a large bending of the knees. So let's see, to stretch, what can that refer to? Also keep in mind, stretching is so very important. It even has a picture here. This is tondu. It's not tendu, it's tondu. All right, next one, to disengage exactly what we see her doing here. She's making the form of a cross to disengage, otherwise known as degage. Yep, I know, weird word. Say it again. Degage. To beat. Beating of the feet. So, um, it's not necessarily a great picture here, but it's almost like a, a hitting or pointing of the toe. It's called bottom lift. Small. Hmm, wonder what this can be referring to. Petite. A petite plie. So a small bending of the knees is otherwise known as. To strike, we are going to look at this as striking a pose, known as frappe. Who would have known you guys order all these fraps from everywhere else, but you guys are referring to another word in the ballet world, to strike, striking of the feet. A PK. Anyone know what this is? Let's show you. To perch. This is um, a beginning move before you go into a turning of the body, which we will find out in just a moment what the right vocabulary it is. PK. This is a PK stance. Tombre. To fall. 
Now you guys can only be imagining, why would dancers want to learn how to fall? Well, it's not necessarily learning to fall, but rather doing it gracefully, because in everything ballet, it's all about elegance. the beret. Beating stop. So we have one, two, three, four. Otherwise known as one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, go. One, two, three, four. Something you're going to learn um, while dancing. How to go by count. A pirouette. A pirouette is what you usually see uh, with a PK, what I was referring to earlier. To whirl, it's a whirl of the body. See, this is a PK here, and she had prepped herself to turn her body. A detourne. In a turn, similar to a pirouette. In cross in the shape of a cross. So it's when uh, the girl earlier was, you know, putting her feet back to the side, forward, making the shape of a cross on one side. A coupe. A cutting action step. Chane. Chains or links. We don't actually use chains or links. Shani is a way to piece the dance together. Fondue. Oops. To melt. Develop a. To develop the foot or the leg. It's a process. Also, what you see here is a. Uh, Nude ballet shoots, uh, which is classically used in a modern type of ballet. Pas de cheval. Step of a horse. So it kind of gives you a description here. Interesting move. You have to have a lot of... Uh, leg muscles to complete the leap in order to get into this step. Pas de chat. Step of a cat. Now if you can see, they really enhance the muscle legs here that you need to complete this move. Is it extremely hard? No. But what makes it really hard is the form. Saute. It is a jump. Combre. Tombre. It is to be arched. Look at this amazing form. Now, she didn't just get there by throwing her, uh, you know, spine back. She did it by rigorous stretching every day. Susu, under, over. This is a form of a susu. Her legs will come down, which this one would be under, this one would be over. A sutinu, to be suspended. Movement, uh, small in both cases, so you can kind of follow it. A changement to change. So see, we have her right foot in the floor in the front. She's uh, changes. Now her left foot is in front. Royale is also known as royal. Just as what we would refer to, refer to as the royal dance. Rond de Jean circle of the leg perfectly like so in this picture 
balance it. It's a rocking step in which you have to keep balance. Perfect job, guys. We just studied our 28 terms. Now, we are going to go ahead and move on to a few quick clips of uh, my personal favorite of ballet. Yay! We had made it through the final part of the video today. Uh, again, we had learned about ballet's history, ballet's most wonderful dancers, its terminology, as well as everything else as far as its history goes. Now, as promised, we will be watching a quick clip of Natalia Esipova, one of the dancers I had mentioned earlier in the Act 2 of Swan Lake. So again, this is a quick clip of Natalia Estipova in the Act 2 of Swan Lake along with her co-dancer, Matthew Golding. Now, again, I do want to mention that this is a form of classical ballet from Swan Lake. Swan Lake is very, very popular. I do recommend everyone... Um, especially in the time being, to go check it out. It's a great ballet, one of, my, one of my favorites, right under the Nutcracker. So I hope that this lesson over ballet was one that you enjoyed. I know I enjoyed sharing it with you guys. Its history is very beautiful, along with the choreography. As you can see, when she was performing her dance, 
She did not hold back with the elegance. And everything she executed, it was with elegance. Also, her form was very beautiful. That is one thing I do want uh, you guys to leave with. If there is nothing else you understood, just remember, ballet is very beautiful. Uh, it's very, very graceful. That is all for tonight. The next video we will be going over will be tying more into our nu nutrition side of things. Thank you for watching and I hope you guys all have a good night and are being safe.